This is the meeting of the Scarborough Board of Education. It's October 1st, 2015. You may have the attendance. Mrs. Bealey? Here. Mr. Chiazzo? Here. Mrs. Massengill? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Ms. Perry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Ms. Hartle? Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have any adjustments to the agenda? Uh, we do. Uh, during the superintendent's report, uh, we will um, go through the uh, year-end financials. That's item number 5.0. And while many of us find the year-end financials um, very exciting and intriguing to listen to, uh, Mrs. Bolton does a fabulous job at that, um, I'm actually going to move that and um, instead bring number 8.0 recognitions up and we'll flip-flop the place of superintendent's report and recognition and we'll bring those recognitions uh, um, up much sooner and before the year-end finance report. <laughs> so, and I think that I see smiles out there so people may be appreciative of that. That would be the only adjustment. So 8.0, which is now 5.0, mm -hmm. the recognition portion. So we have, who's going to take the lead on that? We're going to start Todd. with Todd. Yeah. One clock. Thank you very much. I'm here to honor the retirement of Bernie Knott. Bernie served as our maintenance supervisor for the Scarborough Public Schools, overseeing the crew that makes sure everything works in the district, from pencil sharpeners and clocks to boilers and air handlers. <coughs> Bernie retired uh, on July 31st of this year, after just over 12 years of dedicated service. Loyal, willing to help, conscientious, and the desire to do things right are descriptions I would use to define Bernie as a school employee. <coughs> Most impressive to me was Bernie's training and background in engineering. We could always count on Bernie to design and build things that would always be safe, never break, wear out, be torn down, vandalized, or destroyed. <clears throat> if you ever saw the climbing walls from the old Wentworth School, which are now reinstalled at the Blue Point School, both of which Bernie installed, you would know what I mean. Also, if you visited the plumber gym in the spring and saw the batting cages, or any special services classroom to see the therapeutic swing suspended from the ceiling and used daily by students and staff in those spaces, you will see his handiwork and know what I mean again. Because of the hat he often wore, <laughs> he was also known by students and staff as the cowboy, particularly by primary school students who occasionally saw him retrieving playground balls off the roof of Pleasant Hill School during recess. The man with the cowboy hat was no stranger to hard work. <coughs> Bernie was pivotal in making sure that the schools were open and safe and accessible during and after snowstorms, perhaps shoveling more snow than anyone else in the district. Two years ago, when we shoveled and chipped ice, from the old wheelchair ramp at the Portables in Wentworth on October 31st, yes, Halloween morning. <laughs> I knew Bernie was thinking of retirement when he said, <laughs> I'm getting too old for this stuff. <laughs> last winter's record snows were, thankfully, for Bernie at least, his last swinging a shovel for the Scarborough Public Schools. His greatest pride and joy, though, are his grandchildren, with whom I imagine he is now able to spend more time. If you want to see Bernie smile, just ask him about them. So thank you, Bernie, for over 12 years of outstanding and dedicated service and hard work. We hope you're enjoying your well-deserved retirement and your grandchildren. And if you ever have or miss the desire to shovel snow, I believe you still have my phone number. <laughs> thank you, Bernie. And 
Any comments from the board? Yes, Jackie. Having been here as long as I have, I certainly know Bernie. And Bernie, I thank you for your service and your dedication. And I know that the children love you. And I really didn't recognize you tonight without your hat. <laughs> <laughs> May you enjoy a wonderful retirement and enjoy those grandkids. <coughs> How many do you have? Five. Wow. wow. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm jealous about the snow <laughs> park. <laughs> so maybe I'll give my number to Tom, too, and you know, we'll work something out. But congratulations. Enjoy your time off, and, and thank you. Yeah. Good luck. I'm sure you're going to be very hard for Todd to replace, and I'm sure you will not miss one day of doing the <laughs> shoveling of the snow. Good luck. I was worried you weren't going to come because mm -hmm. I really had to talk to Todd quite a few times to make sure you had the opportunity to come for and we had the opportunity to thank you for all your hard work and your your efforts with for our school. So uh, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And Todd, was great, great recommendation. Thank you. And we have one other retirement. Yes. We have Ann Carson. Anne began her career in Scarborough schools over 20 years ago in August of 1995. While in Scarborough, most of her time was spent at the middle school. Although her official title was kitchen worker, Anne was the jack of all trades. On any given day, Anne could be seen in a role as baker, cook, cashier, and even filled in for the kitchen manager in their absence. She truly was a team player. One of Anne's greatest strengths at the middle school was remembering the names <coughs> of all students a trait that made her one of the favorite with students. And I can speak to that because I would go into the cafeteria and Anne always had a smile on her face with all five to eight hundred middle schools as we at middle school students as we grew. And many times we had conversations about how many more kids are we going to get? And I just say, Anne, just keep on going. We're just gonna keep on going here. But Anne really truly was an inspiration in her value of middle school kids, their humor, and how to make their day and, give, and have them leave the cashier with a smile. She was also, she's also a hit with hockey players, girls, boys, high school, middle school. She's a huge fan of ice hockey. Anne will be greatly missed by her coworkers, building administrators, and mostly her students. Thank you, Anne, for your 20 years with Scarborough Schools, and we have a little token of appreciation for all your work and for the smiles you brought to all the kids at Scarborough Middle School. <laughs> but you didn't bring any snacks tonight. <laughs> She retired oh. <laughs> for cooking for the throng. <laughs> yeah. Very positive. Anyone? We hope that uh, Mr. Carson back there, I see you, that she'll continue to maybe still cook for you. So, and the family. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ann. Uh, it's, it's always been a pleasure to see you do uh, have always had a smile, whether you're delivering a special lunch because we're having a meeting here or at the high school on opening day, and it's greatly appreciated. And Why don't you introduce your family to us? Mm. I know, there's a lot of them, but go ahead. Everybody knows Mr. Entourage, enjoy. 
well, three years ago, we were at a cookout at our neighbor, Helen Howard's house, and you were there, and you said to my daughters, are you in middle school yet? Because I don't recognize you. And I said, no, they're coming to you in the fall. And she said, all right, that explains it. So I believe that you know every one of those kids in the middle school. So, <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Enjoy retirement. Thank you very much for all your years, and Really appreciated. Thank you. Have a good time for yourself. Time, time to have fun. Actually, I asked you in the first day of school. I said, where is she? <laughs> <laughs> because I had forgotten you had retired. Didn't I always see you? My first official day. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're going to start looking younger now, okay? On the first <laughs> official day of retirement, that's what happens to everybody. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I don't think they want to stay for this. <laughs> you, you sure you don't want to stay? It's really exciting. Bye. Bye. Congratulations, Bernie. Thank Bernie. you. Bye, Bernie. Good luck. Thank Have fun. You. Thank you, Bernie. Bye, Bernie. Take care. Bye, stranger. at your trackpad. And I'm just going to go to 6.0 before we go to the financial piece. Mm -hmm. Just two quick reminders for you. <coughs> this Monday at the high school, special school board meeting, 3.30, in the room right across from the auditorium. Now, will that take the place of our no. third Thursday? No. Okay. Um, so this is in I addition think Regina, to. I think we've got to address the other other one as well. Mm -hmm. So um, what we'll be doing Monday is hearing from the administrators, as you know, uh, regarding the their consideration, their their thoughts, their questions that they have regarding uh, the start and end of school times, and also help prepare us <coughs> a little bit for the meeting in Saco with the Biddeford schools. Of that one. when is that? That is October 15th, okay. which is our regular school, school board, board night, I knew there was some and it's at the People's know. Choice Credit Union, okay? In lieu of our, in yeah. lieu of our at 20, 23 Industrial Road in Saco. Oh, is that by the MHG Ice Arena then? Yes. I don't uh, know. know. It, 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 no? it is. It's near, and it's um, near the Scholastic Warehouse. All right. So, what time does that begin? Six. Six to eight. So, <coughs> just just to tell you, can send out an announcement and a message that could date change mm -hmm. time, just not like a public notice, but also for us to put in our calendar. Six. six. So six. So that night of the fifteenth is our usual school board meeting. Okay. Uh, so we're, we're going to need to decide. You know, what are we going to do about that? Are we going to kind of call that our <coughs> call that our additional monthly school board meeting and forego an additional meeting because we've got another one this Two last one. Uh, yeah, I, I just want to point out the board's going to change before or, or immediately after that because okay. right after that last one will be the election and the board seats at the next possible meeting. Is that right? I believe so. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, it is. What is it, like a day? A day a there is a days. third Thursday in October, but you wouldn't check ordinarily have this a meeting. This is the third Thursday. Right. There's October 15th. Thursdays. There's yeah. five Thursdays in October. Five Thursdays. That's mm. the number I was shooting for. <laughs> but we have to have a time to roast Chris. He, he has to come back every after. day. What are you talking about? He gets right. to come back yeah. after. <laughs> I, I'm not saying that for that purpose. I'm just saying, remember, you're going to have we're going to you're going to have a new board seated very the shortly fifth. thereafter. That on the fifth, right? Mm -hmm. Two days right. after the right. election. Yeah, right. right. Happens every year. Yeah. I still don't so think we need to have another meeting, though. No, I mean, I'm fine with that. I, I'm fine with that. If we're going to have yeah. two meetings yeah. to talk about yeah. schedule, right? Then I don't think we need to add a makeup meeting. I think I'm we've fine well with that. covered it. That would be four yep. meetings. So uh, we would do that 15th and Saco in place of. And, and yet, I, 
I'm assuming we will not be sitting as a board down there. No. Um, and I'm guessing we cannot enter into discussions as a board down there. We're basically there, I assume, to hear what, they, what yeah. they're talking right. about Who's for their district. Sure. Yeah, is, right? well, I thought this was a workshop of all of the local districts, wasn't it? That's, kind of exactly an open right. forum? That's exactly right. Okay. M my only question would be, do, do we have an obligation to meet twice a month? We are. We're meeting again. No, I, uh, officially. In that a poll. is official. Well, I thought, I thought Donna just said that that's no, that Monday is official. Monday, Monday will be our official. Right. Okay. Right. There's a second meeting. Okay. Okay. That's fine. It'll be posted. Okay. Yep. It no, is that's posted fine. already. As long as, as long as we meet our, our requirements. Obligation. Yep. And um, the next Thursday is MSMA. Well, we've got enough right. time <laughs> hanging out. Yeah. 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 Exactly. No offense, everyone. Right. But this I know. Is, uh, it's it's we've got other things going on. Right. I, what I, did you I, think? I, really? Like life. Yeah. I was um, looking, I was like looking at the MFBA um, book yesterday, and, 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 and I remember reading a sentence, this is a part-time volunteer position. I mean, <laughs> they're right with the volunteers. It's supposed to be part-time. <laughs> so I guess 22 <laughs> hours in a day is part-time. It's not the full day. <laughs> So um, I'm still trying to understand what happens that on that night down there. If this is a workshop, they've invited us to their work workshop. It's Can not we their, enter? It's not their board workshop. Oh, it isn't? No. 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 It's okay. a regional workshop. You're just attending as a board because you're interested in this topic, which can is perfectly speak? fine. Of course you can. So we can, you're not so we gonna, can join you're, in you're the conversation. You're not going to conduct any business. Right, right, yeah. right. Okay. Yep. Everybody else set? Okay. So that's the chance report. Um, we don't have a student representative here tonight, so that takes care of 7.0. And now we've done the recognition. We come to what was 5.0, which is the year end financials. And Kate, it's all yours. Yay. This is the really important part of the evening, right? Mike's and engaged. I'm I'm really grateful to Mike. We talked earlier. He said he would he would um, for this riveting presentation. So uh, we did go through with finance committee a little bit uh, an overview of this, but I'm I'm just going to give you a quick run through. I've given you a lot of homework. Um, I'm certainly not going to be going here reading page by page. You can all um, understand what I'm talking about. I'm going to hit the high points and get out and then I will entertain questions at the end and obviously you know you can always reach out to me if you have questions after you've reviewed some of this material. So um, in my department we always seem to be either in the future or in the past and uh, right now we're going to spend our time looking back at fiscal year 2015. Um, there were a few highlights in the fiscal year that come to mind in terms of what went on in the district and I've bulleted those here. Um, continuing with our commitment to the goals of our school improvement plan, we implemented a budget for fiscal 15, which added or restored several key positions to our staff, increasing student access to art, music, foreign language, supporting technology in the classroom, student health and safety, and advances in teacher effectiveness. The summer of 2014 was the hectic final lap for the Wentworth Building Project. And September saw the successful opening of the new Wentworth School with the business aspects of the project winding down just to tidying up loose ends with the contractor and finalizing deployment of furnishings, equipment, and technology. And my slideshow is cranky. In fiscal 15, charter schools continue to present a budget challenge with the addition of the state-approved Main Connections Academy. And you'll see as we go along that our budget for charter school costs was exceeded as we expected and will require a couple of our requested budget transfers. In April, we held our third community dialogue and we continued to solicit the involvement of citizen stakeholders in the direction of our school programs and services. This is the summary financial statement showing the big picture movement in the general fund from the beginning to the end of fiscal year 15. You have the detailed figures by category in the printed financial reports in front of you. Here you see the available fund balance at the start of the fiscal year 
the budget to actual status during the year, and the ending fund balance as of June 30, 2015. <coughs> School fund balance was a topic of intense interest during the budget development process for fiscal year 2016. At the end of fiscal year 14, we had approximately $500,000 in undesignated fund balance, and the school board and town council decided to use 425,000 of that available funding to support the fiscal year 2016 budget. The good news tonight, from my perspective, is that in line with recent years, we've managed our way through <coughs> 2015 with a positive fund balance for the year of just over 400,000. This means that we're in a position to use that $425,000 committed to support the fiscal year 2016 budget and still leave a balance of $490,705 in undesignated funds, which will be a comfort knowing how little margin for unexpected costs we now have in fiscal year 2016. On the next couple of slides, I'll point out a few items of note in the spending pattern. As you saw in the summary statement, general fund expenses came in under budget by $595,000. In healthy fiscal years, we see a savings in the neighborhood of $400,000 each year, or about 1% of our annual budget, reflecting our need to manage according to our statutory obligations. This year's surplus was generated by the types of budget to actual changes you've heard me describe before, but it's driven a bit higher because of one item, the amount budgeted for debt service payments in fiscal year 2015. Because of changes in the town's bond issues in FY15, we were left with $170,000 of our budgeted debt service funds not spent. This surplus will move into school fund balance and become part of the $425,000 budgeted for FY16. Another point of interest this year is the continued impact of changes in collective bargaining agreements in the area of health insurance. While the change in spouse coverage for the teacher group was factored into budgeting for fiscal 2015, we also transitioned the education support staff and bus drivers to the same education model, to the same benefits model, mid-year, and saw additional savings in fiscal 2015, amounting in total to about $150,000. Other larger areas of savings were just under 800,000, excuse me, $80,000 in what worth facility costs, utilities and maintenance costs in the new building, a little over $50,000 in energy costs, mostly bus and truck fuel, and the rest is made up of incremental savings throughout the operating budget. As you know, I know you know because I tell you this every year, I'll be requesting an action item from you tonight to authorize budget transfers to balance individual expense accounts that have been overspent by $10,000 or more. These year-end budget transfers ensure that we take note of these accounts and can perhaps use the information to refine future budget development. As usual, whenever we have a deficit in one account, we have a surplus in another area to use to offset it. This year's budget transfer request includes 10 overspent expense accounts out of 624 budgeted lines, and the value of the transfers represents 0.56% of the fiscal year 15 budget, indicating that we were pretty accurate in our budget estimates. If you take a look at the budget transfer document, and that's the two-page one with the pink and green, these are the items that we're going to take action on this evening, or I'm, I'm hoping that you'll support me with. You'll see that as in prior years, there are a number of account overruns, an individual salary, wage, and benefit account due to personnel changes during the course of the year. In each case this year, the accounts that have run over budget can be offset by surplus in other wage and benefit accounts, where for the same types of reasons, we have excess budgeted funds. Taking a look at some of the other cost overruns on our budget transfer request, we can see first charter schools as I mentioned earlier, ran over budget in both the regular ed and special ed accounts, so they're in the first and second section of that chart. We were able to offset these cost overruns with savings in wage and benefit lines, as well as through some deferred spending at the high school. Also under special services, you'll see that tuition paid to outside schools exceeded our budgeted resources, 
driven both by increased tuition rates mandated by the state and by the need to provide the appropriate educational setting for every student. Here we're able to offset with savings in special services, salary, and benefit lines. Under school administration, we had an unexpected cost due to retirement at Wentworth. Offset by savings due to structural changes in leadership positions that were precipitated by that retirement. That's the third section there. And the final section is the entry for heating oil at eight corners, which we're offsetting by natural gas at the middle school. It's simply a result of fluctuations in energy use. Um, we didn't have drastic cost changes this past year in fuel costs. We were just under budgeted a bit for the cold weather at uh, eight corner school. So it's a pretty simple chart. It's uh, all within the same categories. And uh, I'm showing you a slide that I doubt anyone can really read, but it's, it's simply a copy of <coughs> the uh, financial report, the first section of the report that starts with notes and comments. So you'll have that in front of you as well as on this teensy weensy slide. This slide shows a summary of expenses in fiscal 2015, and it's laid out in the 11 voter categories developed by the state. As you can remember, we started to organize our financials using these categories last year in an attempt to make our reporting more consistent with the way the budget is now presented. So when we talk about district to district comparisons of per pupil spending during budget conversations, these are the categories the state is using in their data table. So in this slide, you might be able to see. Um, if not, you can look at the page, the top of page three in your financials report, and you'll see that you have the expenditure percentage for each category, along with the same figures for the past two fiscal years for comparison. George is reading that like he can actually see that. I can see it. From here. You can see well, it. Well, if you're, if you turn, no, if you oh. turn this way, you can see that. Yeah, look at the giant one. You have to turn the other way, uh, exactly. You look that way. Right, and I, I can see it right <laughs> here. Yeah, she's got it right in front of her. This, this slide is another view of the year-end totals by category. Uh, <coughs> this time it's showing tonight's requested budget transfers between categories. And this is pretty small again, but it, it's a simplified version of page two of the budget transfer handout, and that's the pink and green one again. I'm sorry to take you back and forth here. But the, the page two of that account, according to state statute, during the year for which the budget is approved, <coughs> using the cost center summary budget format, the school board may transfer an amount not exceeding 5% of the total appropriation for any cost center to another cost center or among other cost centers without voter approval. So what we're saying here is that we have the authority to do these budget transfers that I'm requesting of you tonight, provided that they don't exceed removing up over 5% of any budget category into another. And the point of this chart that's attached to your budget transfer chart is that we're showing that we haven't done that. We haven't needed to do that. This is something that both the auditors and Department of Ed look at each year. Um, and obviously it's something that we uh, strive for because even though it's a little bit of a, an arbitrary distinction, it does help the public see what we're spending school funds on and ensure that we're appropriately carrying out the wishes of the voters at referendums. Can we switch to revenues for a minute? If we go down through that uh, detailed financial report, this is at the bottom of page three, right below the expenditures piece. Fiscal year 2015 revenue showed an overall shortfall of $36,547 under budget projections. Revenues fell a bit short in student activity fees, which we have understood in the past as an effect of setting the fees lower than the original projections when the fees were established. GPA, which is our general purpose aid state subsidy, shows a shortfall of $30,000. This is due to the State Department of Education's new policy of deducting funds from our GPA to pay private special purpose schools, that special education outside placement, directly on behalf of sending districts. So our tuition bills from those schools are reduced on the expenditure side, although, as you can see, we still spent plenty there. We did a little better than expected as you're looking at the revenue figures with state agency client reimbursement and Medicaid reimbursement. Uh, those are basically driven by changes in enrollment of eligible students, and as we probably all remember, they're a little difficult to budget 
but we came in on the good side on those. Continuing through the financial statement, obviously we spend most of our time on the general fund, but it also the financials also include figures on adult education, school nutrition, grants and trusts, and federal restricted funds, meaning the title grants and local entitlements. There's also a separate year-end status report on multi-year CIP projects, and those are in your financial reports on pages four and five. A couple of points of interest here. The proficiency-based graduation grant funds from the state, now that's a topic that we've all been talking about and circling, circling around student-centered learning, proficiency-based graduation, student-centered scheduling. We did get grant funds from the state. We got about $30,000 last year. We got another $30,000 the year before. And we're beginning to spend those funds on things like professional development, curriculum development, and uh, teacher research into how we can move forward um, to have that target of proficiency-based graduation. So there's some spending showing there. There's also a new entry in that section um, under grants and trusts. It's labeled CC, Administrators Recertification Group, or something like that, and it's uh, the Cumberland County uh, School Administrators Group. They have to get together and recertify on a different level than teachers do in local districts, so there's a, a, a multi-district consortium that gets together and does that, and they needed a new fiscal agent because the nice lady in Cape who did it for them retired, so Joanne, I think, said, Kate will do it. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that's how it went. Yeah. Um, so that, that's, uh, that's really kind of, in, in, uh, in financial terms, it really sort of counts as a trust. It's just a little closed account that we only use for that purpose. They have revenues, they have membership dues, they have expenses, which is their coordinator and their cookies at the meeting. So. It's, it's not too hard. I can do it. Granola bar. Joanne. <laughs> Good cookies. Uh, quickly on adult education, you remember last year we moved adult education out of the general fund reporting, gave it its own section in the financials following guidance of the Department of Education. In fiscal year 2015, we did a better job anticipating the cost of our new workforce programming, but we ended up with a shortfall in state subsidy. If possible, subsidy calculations for adult ed are even harder to predict than regular GPA. Joanne will speak to that. Even so, adult ed programs continue to thrive, and the overall fund balance at year end is positive for adult ed. In school nutrition, like other topics I've mentioned tonight, the school nutrition program received lots of attention during the budget development process for fiscal year 2016. As you can see, we've ended 2015 with a fund deficit of $156,000 and we'll be requesting your vote to cover that deficit later in the meeting. We were excited to welcome Peter Esposito as our new food service director this past July, and we're already enjoying some of the creative and delicious ideas he's brought to the district. As you know, we've entered into a shared services agreement with Cape Elizabeth for school nutrition, and we're hopeful that we'll achieve some operational efficiencies and continue program improvements through this model. As I mentioned earlier, a highlight of the 2014-15 fiscal year was the opening of the new Wentworth School. Instead of including a one-page summary of the Wentworth project expenses in the main financial report, as I've done for the past couple of years, I've given you a separate, larger packet of Wentworth financials. Now that we've essentially come to the end of the project, I thought it might be interesting for folks to see some of the details of the expenses involved. Um, I've been accused of showing off because it's pretty thick and uh, I think Kelly and I were talking about the fact that I'm just trying to prove that I did some work on the Wentworth project. Um, but I, I do think that there's, there's some interesting details in there. It, it's, it's kind of fun to follow the trajectory of, of the project and the things that went into it. The Wentworth School construction project was notable for its smooth progress and its timely completion. Project financials are almost complete. A small balance of, a, of about $12,000 is owed to the contractor pending final site work. The project was budgeted by the Wentworth Building Committee at over $3 million less than the amount approved by Scarborough citizens at referendum and finished at an additional $300,000 under budget, as you'll see from the project summary. You may recall that we've included $250,000 of this surplus in our budgeted funding for FY 2016 
and the remaining balance will also be applied toward future debt payments on the project. So to look forward for just a minute, a few things that are coming up. Fiscal year 2016, first quarter financials, which closed today, it just doesn't stop, uh, will be provided to the Finance Committee at their next business meeting and then distributed to the full board. Um, secondly, we're in the process of putting together materials for the auditors for fiscal 15. They'll start their field work, work with us this year on November 9th, and they expect to complete the combined school and town audit in late December as usual, and they'll have a presentation as usual after the new year. And finally here, despite a good measure of budget fatigue after the long approval process for fiscal year 16, we've already begun conversations about the budget development process for the coming year. Most stakeholders agree, I think, that we made great strides last year, both in collaboration with town leaders and in outreach to the public, but there's obviously more work to be done to engage the community productively in this important work. So I'll leave you with the action items that I'm requesting tonight. I believe Mr. Chiazzo will provide you with the appropriate motion. Um, it's under your agenda item 9.4. If anyone has any quick questions right now, I'll be happy to respond. And I uh, reiterate my invitation for follow-up questions once you've had a chance to read your homework. Jackie? Kate, do you know offhand how many students are uh, now outplaced for special needs? I don't know um, okay. right offhand. Um, I'm thinking about some of the budget work that I did with Allison, and we did have figures in the, in the, in the dollar amounts, but I don't know how many students that represents. Thank you. And have booster commitments been met for uh, those areas where boosters are funding? For fiscal 15, yes. Um, for fiscal 16, I know that Mike has been working on some uh, contracts and, and getting some agreements in place and sorting out who's going to be taking care of what. But for fiscal 15, we're all set. Thank you. Anything else? Chris? Uh, I, I just do want to um, extend my gratitude to Kate. I think if you look at the, and her team, but mostly Kate, um, if you look at these numbers, um, it's a 40, close to $42 million budget, and to require $235,000 in transfers may sound like a lot of money, but uh, doing the quick math, it's 0.56% of the budget. So that is definitely a testament to her budgeting capabilities and the fact that we are in fact good stewards of the town's money. So I think um, I just want to say thank you to Kate for that hard work. It, it definitely doesn't go unnoticed, certainly on my side because you do all the heavy lifting, but um, uh, great job. I think that's, that's uh, a huge testament to the work that's done. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, as I said in finance committee, I did it all myself. <laughs> I also think I made a snotty comment about how um, how stingy most of my colleagues are in their spending, and they're they're good thrifty Yankees, and they work really hard not to spend money that doesn't need to go out the door. So I give them my gratitude. Anyone else? <coughs> good. Do you have a motion? <coughs> So um, yeah, there are actually two motions that will come forward. Um, first motion is move approval to authorize budget transfers for accounts overspent by more than 10000 per the details provided to the school board by the business office. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll well, I, again, I just do the wanna, second one. Yeah, I just want a couple of things of clarification again. Um, the... Um, Certainly the, uh, the transfers on the charter school, I think we, we discussed in finance, were, uh, are going to be a one-time thing. The state's changing their, their funding uh, around, so we won't be seeing those on a regular basis. That wasn't necessarily something that we missed. It was a combination of not getting data in time from the charter schools and the fact that not being able to predict where the kids were going and when they were going. 
also kids that kind of come into the district and out of the district during the course of the year. So um, that's a, a, a not a full amount, of course, but that's a, one of the areas that I think that are going to change for next year for sure. Uh, most of these transfers, I think, as Kate mentioned, are, are personnel issues. And again, the, 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 the value of the transfers, the size of the transfers in comparison to the budget are really minuscule. I mean, $230,000 is a lot of money, but relatively speaking, it's a, it's a very small percentage uh, of, of, our, of our budget expenditures. Um, I'll just make one more comment. George and I were talking about this earlier, and, you know, that it is a, a considering how many GL accounts we budget for and how much time takes place between with the finalization of the budget and the people that turn up in September and come to work, um, it, it's a small amount. Um, but I don't think that we need to believe that it, we're doing anything wrong or that it will go away or it will, it will become fewer accounts next year. Or I, I think that it's, it's pretty much business as usual um, to recognize that some of these accounts are going to need adjustment. But that's why the board policy is there. It's to take a look. And if, if anything unusual occurs, like the charter school situation or the, the tuition situation, it's another opportunity for us to reflect on that and see if we need to do anything differently. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Very good. So your motion is for number one for the transfer of the funds of the $10,000. Everyone in favor? Five, and that would be one absent. And another motion. So the second motion is move approval to transfer $156,164 from the general fund year-end fund balance to cover school nutrition fund deficit. Move approval as presented. Oh, I'm seconding. <laughs> <laughs> Second. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Uh, I, again, just to point out that um, that shortfall is more on the revenue generation side. We are limited with how much money we can charge for a meal in town um, because of the federal program. And Kate, please, obviously, you'll, you'll, you'll correct me where I, if I go wrong here. Um, certainly bringing Mr. Esposito on board, I think, is going to uh, increase our participation in the revenue side of things. Um, I had a chance to participate in the Harvest Lunch, and it was absolutely fantastic. So I think that's a wonderful program for our kids. Um, he's bringing a lot of local produce, uh, which is good, healthy stuff. It's, it's engaging local farmers, and he's saving money as well, which is something that uh, I think we should very, very, all, very much appreciate, all of us. Uh, and I would encourage people wherever possible to, uh, to, to see if you can participate in a meal or two there. And, and a lot of homemade mm -hmm. things, so uh, not prepackaged, processed, like chicken tenders. They're fresh and breaded with pan cow breadcrumbs. Made from scratch. Back Yum. to cooking in the kitchen and Yum. not just uh -huh. assembling. Yep. And, and Chris is absolutely correct. If you look at the financial statement, the school nutrition program came in under budget on the expenditure side. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the revenue pl place where, where we've fallen off. So mm -hmm. um, Peter has some really innovative ideas. We're really, you know, first of all, we've, we're looking forward to eating all of his food. And then secondly, we're looking forward to having the program be uh, thrive a little bit more. And just for those that didn't make it to Harvest Lunch, um, com at, at least at Wentworth, um, compostable little trays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the kids, you go. They, the kids were very good with instruction yeah. oh, as to what bins, the various mm -hmm. things, though some other members that we attended with weren't as kind in that regard, but it all worked <laughs> out in the end. The, yeah. the young students were able to step up to the plate and, mm. and, and take care of that. So it was, it was lovely. And Keep the adults in line. Yeah. Well, I would Tom, just like Tom, to Tom point out that some of those in attendance who were being accused of not being helpful listened the first time uh, and weren't um, oh. talking while instructions were being given to the children. But, but again, I will not use names. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing I wasn't there. <laughs> All in favor of the motion. Five and one absent. Thank you very much, folks. Thank, Thank you, Kate. Thanks, Kate. Good Thank job. You. Thank you very much. And now we move on to 9.0, new business, 9.1.
minutes of the meeting of September 3rd, 2015. Move approval. Second. Any other corrections? Deletions? Very good. All in favor? Five, one absent. 9.2, the main meeting minutes of September 17th, 2015. Move approval as presented. Second. Any comments? Questions, changes? Nope. Okay. All in favor? Five. One absent. 9.3, the Maine School Board Association Delegate. Jackie, do you want to? We have a, a form we need to sign here this evening. Uh, let me just see if I can put my hands on it. It's the certification of the school board representative to the delegate assembly of the Maine School Board Association. And my understanding is that would be you. Is that correct, Jackie? Is that where? No. no okay. Not necessarily. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will be there in attendance as a member of the board, but I would prefer that there would be another member yeah. of the board as the voting member representing Scarborough. So anyone attending can can do this. I have yes. done it before. I've done it before. You've done it before, Christine? Have you done well, it? I did presentations before. Yeah. Okay. So try to trump it. <laughs> I, um, I'm unsure of my work schedule right now, so I can't commit today that I'm going to be there both days. So. Yeah, and I don't remember which day they do this on. Is it, is it on Thursday or Friday? It's the first day, usually. Thursday. 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 I think it's Thursday afternoon, yes. the last, <coughs> last two, like 2 o'clock yes. or after, yeah. And I know Jody's in a similar situation with work, so. Right, okay. And and I know one of those days I might not be able to be there, but. All eyes on you, Christine. Oh, I guess that's me. Do you <laughs> want to do it? But so I, I can do it if. What, uh, which session is it? It's the last session then? Uh, in the no, afternoon, right after lunch, usually. It takes one of the sessions, yeah. right? Yeah, right after yeah. lunch, usually the first day. All right. Sure. You're all set? Oh, look at Great. That. Thank you, Christine. We'll put you down. Get nice to volunteer, isn't it? Uh, what did uh, you say, I, Kelly? Nice to volunteer. Uh, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or be slowly <laughs> handpicked <laughs> to become volunteered. And then sort of we like need a can. name for of an alternate for that same issue in case you're ill or whatever. I could. Be. I can. I would. Just soon be the alternate. Oh, okay. I will be there. You'll be there anyway. And that's oh, for sure that I will be there. So. Oh, here it tells me exactly what time I'm supposed to be somewhere here. Right here. Okay. Two twenty-five. All right. I'll okay, put that in my calendar. I need a motion. Mm -hmm. So I need a motion here. I move Christine Massengill be our delegate for the Maine School Board Association convention. And Jackie. And Jackie is the alternate. Second. Oh. Very good. Discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Five. <laughs> I have a choice. <laughs> One absent. Thank you, Christine. <coughs> Nine point four. Well, actually, we did that. Yeah, we did we're that. on to appointments. Yeah. Nine point five appointments. Wentworth Homework Club. We have we have a list of that. With you, sir. Um, I think. This is Shea brought up um, or asked the question. Last year there were four at Wentworth. Um, we just had two that you approved in the previous business section of uh, the meeting that we had. These are the second two um, individuals. So uh, it's the same funding and the same operation as last year. Mm -hmm. uh, that you approve those. Will of the board move approval as presented? Second. Second. Any discussion, questions? Very good. All in favor? Five. One absent. And 9.5.2 is high school co-curricular. Uh, these are not all. There will be some coming forward, I understand, um, from Mr. Legage. Um, but these are uh, requiring your approval um, as of right now. Move Go. approval. Second. Discussion? Any questions for Mr. Legage? So I have one question. So the um, TBD on the school speech and debate, mm -hmm. do we have, I mean, do we have a candidate It's just not fully 
committed kind of a thing, or are we still looking for somebody? Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Five, one absent. Very good. Okay, and 10.0. Our motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We're not doing committee report. All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned.